So this is tonight's video. Tonight we are covering compare and order rational numbers. And remember our rational numbers are any of the numbers we've been talking about over the last couple of days. It can include fractions, decimals, whole numbers, integers, even irrational numbers like pi and the square root of two. I found a video I like online. We're not gonna watch the whole video. So bear with me as you watch parts of the video and then I will pause the video and give instructions. This first part is comparing two mixed numbers using a number line. I would like you to write this down so that you have it in your notes. And remember we are calling this um, video compare and order rational numbers. So that's the title of your video. Five and four ninths and negative five and one ninths. Our first step here is going to be to divide this line into ninths. Well, right now I have negative five and zero ninths, and so I'm going to divide this into one ninth, two, three, four, five, six, seven ninths, eight ninths, and it's not exact for sure. But I'm going to have negative 5 and 1 ninth close to the negative 5. And then I have negative 2 ninths, negative 3 ninths, negative 4 ninths, negative 5 ninths. So I have negative 5 and 5 ninths right there. And so there's negative 5 and 5 ninths. There's negative 5 and 1 ninth. If I want to compare the two, well, 0 is somewhere out here. We were to continue this number line zero somewhere out there and the further you are to the left away from zero the smaller you are so negative five and five ninths is going to be less than negative five and one ninth fill in the circle with less than greater than or equals to make a true sentence at this point i want you to pause the video and try the three problems on your own after you've tried the three on your own, then I want you to restart the video and check your answers. Again, I want you to pause the video and try each of these problems on your own, and then restart the video and check your answers. Now one method we can use to compare these two numbers is to find common denominators. So if we rewrite our five-sixths and our seven-ninths, if we can get a common denominator here, Let's see, for sixths and ninths, we can get both those to thirty-sixths and six times six is thirty-six. So five times six is thirty. Nine times four is thirty-six, so seven times four is twenty-eight. And when I go to compare, thirty is greater than 28, 36. So 5 6 is greater than 7 ninths. Now for the next question, I'll use a slightly different method here. We have 1 fifths and we're going to compare that to 7 fiftieths. Now could we get a common denominator? Sure. There's also this other way called the butterfly method. Now what we could do here is take our 1 times our 50. And that's on the left side as our 1 is on the left, so this is going to be on the left. And we're going to compare that to 7 times 5. Again, if you're asking what goes on the left side, what goes on the right side, look for your numerator. Well, our left side simplifies to 50, our right side simplifies to 35, and 50 is greater than 35, so 1 fifth is greater than 7 fiftieths. Now if you found common denominators for this one, you would have something along the lines of 1 fifth converting into 50ths in order to compare to 7 fiftieths, and then you would multiply 
multiply by 10 and 10 and get 10 fiftieths is greater than 7 fiftieths. So either way you want to work it, you'll get the same answer. Where it gets fun is with negative fractions. Now, if we have negative 9 sixteenths, and we want to compare that to negative 7 tenths, notice how I attach the negative to the numerators. We can do that as we're comparing these fractions. Take the negatives from the side and put these with the tops, with the numerators. When I go to use the butterfly method with this, 9, or negative 9, times 10 is negative 90. And if I compare that to negative 7 times 16, negative 112. When I go to compare these two numbers, negative 90 is greater than negative 112. So negative 9 16 is greater than negative 7 tenths. Second period class, 37.5% of students like to bowl. In the fifth period class, 12 out of 29 students like to bowl. In which class does a greater fraction of the students like to bowl? I would like you to try this problem on your own before hearing his answer. So pause the video now and try and work it out. Remember that you can convert percentages to fractions, or you can convert fractions to percentages, whichever is easiest for you. That's your one hint. Again, I'd like you to work this problem before he does, so pause the video now, work the problem, and then unpause the video and see how he solves the problem. Let's set this up with our second period at 37.5%. And our fifth period is 12 out of 29. Now, one thing I can do here in order to compare is to get both numbers as a decimal. Now, if it says in our little note here on the side, to get this 37.5% into decimal form, we need to move our decimal point two spots to the left which would be 0.375, and we remove the percentage sign. And as we practice to get 12 29ths as a decimal, we can put the 12 on the inside along with a few zeros here, or 29 on the outside, and divide. Now, 29 doesn't go into 1, and 29 doesn't go into 12. But 29 goes into 120 about four times. Four times nine is 36. Four times two is eight. Plus the one is 11. Subtract and you get four. Bring down your zero. 29 goes into 40 about one time. One times 29 is 29. Subtract and get 11 down to zero, and this goes in about three times. Three times nine is 27. Three times two is six, plus two is eight. And as you subtract this one out, you get 23. And I have enough information now. I have 0.375, and I can now compare that to point. Four, one, three. Well, as I compare these decimals now, I have 375 thousandths compared to 413 and some extra thousandths. Well, if I just compare 375 to 413, 375 is less than 413, and the same thing is true here. 
375 thousandths is less than 413 thousandths. So if we can get them to the common place value, we can order these much more simply. So, which class like the bowl more? Fifth period. Now to order the set 23%, 2100s, 1 fourth, and 1 fifth from least to greatest, what we're going to do here is to get all of these numbers in to decimal form. And we'll use place value to order them. So if I write down vertically up and down our list here, if we want to get 23% into a decimal, right now the decimal point between the three and the percentage sign. Slide that back two to the left, and this becomes 0 0.23. Sorry, I should have paused this sooner. I don't want you to do this before and then check your answer like we have been, but I do think you should write this down as an example to know how to order sets that come in different forms. As you can see, this set has a percent, it has a decimal, it has two fractions. You are going to be asked questions like this, so having this written down as an example is going to be very beneficial to you. Again, you don't have to pause the video and work it right now, but do follow along and copy what he does as, a, as an example. Well, our 0 0.21 is already in decimal form, which is kind of neat. So that's just 0 0.21. As for our 1 fourth, well, if you need to divide that to get it into a decimal, please do. This becomes 2 and a 5. So 1 fourth is 0 0.25. And our 1 fifth, well, 1 fifth. You could divide, or you could say, well, one-fifth is the same thing as two-tenths, if you multiply by two on top and bottom, and two-tenths is 0 0.2, two-tenths. Now, in order to line up our place value here, we're going to put this zero here in the hundredth spot. That way we can have everything lined up in the hundredth spot. We have our tenths, and we have hundredths. And now when we look and compare from least to greatest, let's look for the smallest. Well, they're all the same in the one. They're all zero. We're all the same two, 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 two in the tenths. So now we're looking for the smallest number in our hundredth spot. And our smallest number in our hundredth spot is here, the zero. So this is going to be our least. So one-fifth is the least. Now when we look to continue on, what else is our next smallest? We have 0, which we did, a 1, a 3, and a 5. Well, our 1 is next, 0 0.21. So 0 0.21 is our next. Now is our second one. Then we have to compare the 3 in the hundredths place and the 5. Well, 3 is smaller. So 23% is our third number, which leaves us now with our greatest at one fourth. So in order to compare and order multiple different types of rational numbers, if we get everything into a decimal point, everything lined up, we can then easily write these from least to greatest. So as you can see, he had a variety of forms of numbers, percents, decimals, and fractions, and he converted them into one standard form to be able to compare them. He liked decimals. Decimals are great. Sometimes it might be easiest to put them in fractions. Sometimes it's easiest maybe even to put them in percents. The point is, it doesn't matter what form you put them in, as long as the forms are the same, so it's all decimals, all fractions, all percents, so that you can figure out what order they go into. All right, this has been your first flipped classroom homework lesson. I hope you would enjoy it, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.